What is up class? So I haven't posted a video in about two months. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> in fact, that's the first time that's ever happened in all the years of the School Zone channel, which by the way, turns four years old today. Yep, in those four years, I've never gone more than a week or so between videos. So it's perfect that I'm back today on the channel's four year birthday to restart my videos again and explain what's been up with me for the last couple of months. Oh, and I'm gonna be playing a little Borderlands in the background while I talk. It's the recent remastered version, and I think this is the General Knox DLC. Borderlands is one of my favorite game franchises, by the way, besides Fallout, Elder Scrolls, and Assassin's Creed, of course. Such a good game. Anyway, I wish I could say I was off doing something really exciting, like climbing Mount Everest or scuba diving in the Great Barrier Reef, but sadly not. The reason I haven't posted for the last two months was something many of us actually experience at least once in our lifetimes, and that is burnout. Now, many of us throw out the term burnout casually, but burnout is a real work health related syndrome that has recently been classified as a bona fide medical condition by the World Health Organization. It can manifest with symptoms as benign as a lack of motivation and emotional exhaustion to much more unhealthy symptoms like sleep disturbances and depression. And without even realizing it, I had fallen into the more unhealthy range of symptoms. The reason it was so hard for me to recognize it before it was too late is that, as you guys can tell from my videos, I'm usually an optimistic and cheerful guy. Nothing normally gets me down, which is why it was so hard for me to recognize or even admit to myself that I was actually in a state of depression. And when you're in a state of depression, even if it's just temporary, your whole life rhythm gets out of order, which leads to insomnia, unhealthy food cravings, lack of energy to exercise, otherwise known as fatigue, and feelings of regret or worthlessness. I know everyone goes through ups or downs in life, of course, we're all human. And in the past, I'd always been so resilient and course corrected before things got much past feeling blue, you know what I mean? But this time, I didn't course correct, and I'll explain why in a second, but it finally got the best of me and I had to step away from YouTube for a bit to get my bearings. Now, just about every major YouTuber has made a video about this, especially the blogger type YouTubers. So I'm sure you've seen at least one of these type of videos from one of your other their favorite YouTubers over the course of the last few years or so. Whenever I used to see those kind of videos, especially when I wasn't doing YouTube yet, I'd always be dismissive and think to myself, come on, bro, you know, you're doing one of the coolest jobs on the planet. Get a grip. It's not like you're digging ditches for a living. Well, now that I've experienced it myself, I'll never say that again. And you know, the funny thing about that, what two things do you get a lot of digging ditches that you don't get a lot of being a YouTuber? Sunshine and exercise. Two things that are actually antidotes to depression. So while dig ditchers may certainly get bored of their job, they're probably not going to have any trouble sleeping at night or have, you know, their circadian rhythms out of whack. Why did it happen and why did I fail to recognize it though? I failed to recognize it because I actually love doing YouTube. The problem with doing anything you love, though, is it has to give back. It can't be a one-sided relationship. My earnings on YouTube have been declining for the last six months or so. In fact, when I did my taxes back in April, I realized that I'll probably have done better in 2018 than I will in 2019 as far as making a living. What kept me going, though, despite the declining paycheck, was you guys. You guys are awesome. You know, your enthusiasm, your positive comments, just being able to exchange knowledge and creativity with you guys around a hobby that we're all passionate about is amazing. So why then is YouTube been declining? Well, it may or may not be a systemic YouTube problem. You know, there's more competition on the platform. There's more competition off the platform with things like Twitch. And maybe some of the early magic of YouTube is fading a little, who knows? But when I compared myself to all the people in my particular niche on YouTube, I did notice a recognizable trend, Fallout 76. Whether you love or hate Fallout 76, there is a statistical pattern that's formed over the last six to eight months and it's backed up by undeniable math. Nearly every YouTube gamer who's covered or continues to cover Fallout 76 has seen a massive slowdown in subscribers and views. There are a few websites out there that track YouTuber statistics, First, I compared every YouTuber that shows up in my related channel section. Then I looked at YouTubers who only cover Fallout 76 peripherally. Then I looked at YouTube gamers who stopped covering Fallout 76 a while back. And finally, I looked at YouTube gamers who never covered Fallout 76 at all, like in completely different gaming niches. Now with all statistics, they're gonna
going to be anomalies. That's why you want to look at medium bell curves, what's called normal distribution. And here was my takeaway. YouTube gamers who post regularly but don't cover any Bethesda games are doing fine. Some are doing better than others, of course, depending on their style. But there hasn't been a clear pattern of punishment. YouTube gamers who started off covering Fallout 76 and quickly course corrected took an immediate hit that took several months to recover from, but eventually they recovered. A subgroup of that that didn't play any more Bethesda games recovered even faster. Then there's the group who covers Fallout 76 regularly, or at least semi-regularly. They took the greatest hit of all. Their view and sublines on a graph chart look like ski slopes from the top of an icy mountain, mine included. Even some of the big-time lore guys and gaming news guys that I'm sure many of you are subscribed to, I don't want to mention any names out of respect to them, but I think the causal vector can clearly be drawn back to Fallout 76. Now, the contest deadline for my Fallout 76 building contest was yesterday, and I wanted to make sure I posted this video after that because of all the hard work those contestants put into their videos. I'm still going through with the contest, and there still will be voting and prizes. It'll be fun. But for the sake of the channel, it's going to be the last set of Fallout 76 videos I post, and here's why. YouTube is like the ultimate free market supply and demand system, you know? The way consumers vote with their wallet when it comes to products out there, they also vote with clicks when it comes to online videos. Now, some YouTubers try to juice the game a little with clickbait and post spamming, but ultimately people are only going to stick around and watch a video if they're interested in the topic. Time is a form of currency. And here's the thing, I really had no idea how badly the entire gaming ecosystem was shaken by Fallout 76. I'm finally seeing it ripple through the zeitgeist, so to speak. I don't know if it was hope or naivety, but I can see now I was in a state of denial. Some commenters joked that it was Stockholm Syndrome. Snarky, but they were probably right. And for the gaming industry, it actually goes much deeper than the average gamer realizes. This is just my theory, and you guys feel free to weigh in below, but trust and familiarity go a long, long way with human nature. For many of us, Bethesda Studios felt like the last bastion of hope against the gaming corporatocracy. They made huge open-world games that were replayable on a scale way beyond any other game companies. And before Creation Club and Fallout 76, gamers felt like they could trust Bethesda not to be greedy vultures as so many other gaming companies have become, like EA and Activision, etc, etc. I know Bethesda had a little episode with the whole Skyrim horse armor fiasco, but we all thought they had learned their lesson. We had no idea it was a test run for Fallout 76. You know, on Metacritic, Skyrim still has a score of 96%. That's almost an A+. Fallout 76's latest score on Metacritic is 49%. That's an F minus. And here's the thing, I think Fallout 76 shook the trust of loyal Bethesda fans so much, it literally might be years before they can recover it, if at all. Other game companies have weathered storms like this by being both better the next time and putting out very frequent games. For example, and again, this is just my opinion, but I think Assassin's Creed Unity was the worst game of the series. But a year later was Syndicate, which was a definite improvement, and then a year later was Origins, which was even more of an improvement, and then a year after that was Odyssey, which I think was their best game yet. They didn't make it an online-only game or a game as service. They kept the microtransactions cosmetic and to a minimum. I really don't care what the game is going to cover next time, whether it be Vikings or Samurai. I'm buying it. That's a proper recovery. We'll have to wait and see if Bethesda learned their lessons and can recover, but let me tell you what broke the charm spell for me on Fallout 76. As you guys may have seen from my Aftermath series videos, I was hot, then cold, then hot again on Fallout 76. I really did think there was a chance Fallout 76 could redeem itself from such a tragic launch. I hate online-only multiplayer games and games as a service, but I was willing to look the other way because it was a Fallout game. But here's where the problem spoke to me personally. We all know the game has very little replay value when it comes to the actual storyline and adventuring, but the building was still fun for me. The problem was that they started offering limited time items in the Atomic Shop that then permanently disappeared after the sale period. Like you couldn't even buy them later for a higher price. They did this with building items as rewards for limited time events too. Since I'm not spending every waking hour on Fallout 76, I lost out on a ton of cool building items that are no longer available because of those missed windows of opportunity. As a huge fan of the Fallout 4 building system, that really pissed me off. I had bought all the Fallout 4 DLC specifically so I could collect the new building items. And as such a collector, I had missed the boat on many cool items in Fallout 76. I felt like I was being excluded. Like, even for someone who was willing to pay extra for the purposes of the channel. How does that game mechanic build goodwill among fans? You're seriously going to punish faithful players if they don't check the Atomic Shop every day? 
Really, Bethesda? I don't even check my own mail every day. I know what they were doing, though. Someone in their marketing department probably read about a recent psychological phenomenon in the social media world called FOMO. You guys have probably heard of it. It stands for the fear of missing out. It's a way social media proprietors have made their apps more addictive over the last decade or so. Well, someone must have told some decision makers at Bethesda that this was a good idea to incorporate into the game, a way to force players to constantly check the Atomic Shop for silly pseudo-sales and limited-time items. And I was noticing it wasn't a one-off thing. It was happening more and more as the months went by, and it really started to piss me off. The second thing that started happening is that smaller and more inconsequential items were starting to go on sale in the Atomic Shop, and less items were being sold as sets. I mean, it was bad enough you had to find plans for a red plush chair and then separate plans for a nearly identical green chair. I mean, that was annoying in of itself, but at least it wasn't costing you money. Now items were popping up that looked very similar to each other and not even being sold as sets. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but I saw something that even looked like a recycled asset from Fallout 4 and it was being sold for like 10 bucks. You know, which is the price of an entire add-on pack in Fallout 4. Made me realize that pretty soon they were going to start selling spoons and forks for decorating tables and charging like $5 a pop. So that did it for me with the Atomic Shop. That and looking back at my credit card statements and realizing that I had finally spent more money on refilling atoms than on the game itself. But the final straw on the camel's back was the video I was trying to make all through April. It was a compilation of all the known building glitches in Fallout 76 that could improve your camp building prowess. There was only one problem. I started off with literally a dozen helpful glitches to share with you guys. And by the time I finally gave up on the video in mid-May, they had patched or severely restricted three quarters of them. You guys may have seen my Twitter post about that. I've never had to go back and redo a video so many times in all my years of YouTube. And the very last time I tried, I was so flustered by the process that I actually forgot to press record and didn't even capture about 30 minutes worth of tutorial footage. So I was just spent, and I was so pissed that they were focusing on all the wrong things to improve the game. You know, the only reason that we have to have these glitches is because of the restrictions to the building system, which, it, you know, puts restrictions on our freedom of creativity. Now, of course, I wasn't just lying around all the rest of the time. As many of you know, I still have a day job. And because of the reduction in views this year, I've been having to pick up extra hours anyway. But by the time I got to the end of May, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to see out this Fallout 76 building contest and then that'll be the end of it. Now the good news is that the wake-up call made me realize that the decline was not all my fault. That was a huge relief for someone like me who put so much life energy into their channel. And it made me start going outside more, hitting the gym, eating healthier, and coming to the obvious realization that my hopes for the channel don't have to hinge on one game or one game company. Viewers continue to subscribe to the channel and leave me lots of positive feedback, just not on any of my Fallout 76 videos. As the saying goes, don't hate the player, hate the game. Now my apologies to all of you who still like Fallout 76, I'm not at all trying to rain on your parade. If you still like the game, you do you boo. And to all the players who entered the contest, don't worry, we're still going to have fun with that and we're going to make it an awesome swan song for Fallout 76 on the channel. But we have to get real here, Fallout 76 is otherwise a channel killer. And if you happen to know of a channel that is currently doing well posting Fallout 76 content, it probably has more to do with the talent and charisma of the host. So here are my plans for the rest of the year. I'm going back to having fun with the Fallout 4 building tutorials in the Nomad Shop class until the fall when the Outer Worlds finally releases. Then I'm going to transition transition either partly or fully into that game. And it's a natural transition from my core Fallout 4 audience too, because Obsidian is the game studio that made Fallout New Vegas, which was my favorite game of the series. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, if Fallout New Vegas ever got a full remaster with a robust Fallout 4 style building system, you know we'd be diving into that pool. But that's probably never going to happen. Barring that, those are my plans for the rest of 2019. Before I wrap up though, I want to thank all of you who stuck with me during this hiatus and didn't unsubscribe. You guys are my true peeps. And if you're new to the channel or you did unsubscribe, consider rejoining. Class is back in session! Also, a huge shout out to the student council. A few people dropped out, but not as many as I would have thought. You guys have true class, pardon the pun, and I hope I'm able to do you proud in the months to come. I really appreciate all of you listening to my recount on here and where my head's been at for the last couple of months. Burnout was bound to happen to me eventually. Some might even be surprised that it took four years. But anyway, you guys keep me going, so thanks again, and I'll see you very soon. LPK, love, peace, knowledge.